We're in Revelation chapter 5 this morning. Revelation chapter 5 is one single verse to start us off because that's what started me off with these thoughts. Most of you know we're studying the book of Revelation in our midweek Bible study. When we, were, when we read these a couple of weeks ago, this one verse stood out to me. And I thought about it. And I thought that needs to be a message. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. Check my time. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four twenty and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word this morning. When I read that in our study, I really that stuck with me for several days. It's just a single part of a sentence that I want us to look at this morning. The golden vials full of odors, which are which is incense, which are the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints. This morning my message is called Teach Us to Pray. Teach us to pray. And I want us to focus once again on prayer. Prayer is something that you understand a little about because if you're a Christian, you prayed to receive Christ. You talked to Him. But it's not something that you probably do on a regular basis as you should. Most of us fail at our prayer life. I say most of us because I do. We all need to improve our prayer life. So I want us to think about prayer today and focus on what prayer is, what it isn't. Um, and I've given reference to teach us to pray, and maybe you know that verse. We're going to go there in just a minute. But I want you to look at this passage, that there in heaven was incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, we don't have services where we have incense like the Catholic Church does, where we bring incense in. And it's a it's a uh, fragrance that is smelled throughout the room in in reference to worship of God. The worship this is the prayers of the saints. That is symbolic in that service of the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints. If you think about um, incense, even a bad odor, a bad odor can linger, but a good a good fragrance really has a lot to do. It lingers in a room, doesn't it? Now, I'm, I'm really, um, my, my sense of smell is really poor. Um, a lot of times, you know, I can't smell flowers, but I can, but I'm sort of tuned to things that I'm, that I'm really uh, focused on, such as the wood stove. If it's, if it's burning too hot, I can smell it. If it's, if the door's been left open, I can smell the smoke and, um, you know, I smell when I get out of the car. I can smell the smoke of the chimney when I get out in the winter time, and uh, I'm real in tune to that kind of thing. And that is symbolic of something's happening to me. There's something going on in the room. If I come into this room and there's a smell of uh, uh, some type of fragrance, I know that there's been a candle lit or something like that. We know that something has taken place by the fragrance that we smell. We know that a flower has opened up. Amen? Amen. We know that ham's about done in the oven. Right. How many times have, have you heard mom say, you know, did anybody get the biscuits out? Did you not smell them burning? <laughs> you know? It's a, it's a symbol of something's happening. This is a symbol of something's happening. Look again. The we'll say the the incense, the the golden vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. The prayers that you have reach heaven and linger. Think about that. They linger. Now we we see things like email emails that come in or text messages that come in. So you know somebody says, uh, I need you to pick up milk and bread on the way home or can you stop and and um, do this for me and you get that 
boom and it's over with. You might remember it, but these, these things linger in the room. They stay there with God. They are compounded with God and added to. And all the things, this incense is a sweet fragrance to him. It's not a bad thing. He doesn't mind you praying to him. In fact, he adores it when you pray to him. God loves for you to pray to him. In a minute, we're going to see that it's just basically communication with God, which we are really poor at. And, all, and, and it sounds odd, in all the, uh, the technologies that we have to communicate, we are poor at, at communicating. We are extremely poor. We as humans have reached a state where we believe that an emoticon could portray feelings. You know, wife says, honey, you never tell me you love me. I sent you a heart in a text message. I sent you kissy lips in a text message. I gave you a card. Or I told you I loved you when we got married. Isn't that enough? You know, we really do. We're poor at communicating. We don't speak to each other. You know, I took the garbage out. Does that not say I mean, what else can I do to say I love you? I took the garbage out. It's your garbage too, pal. You know? You're not doing her a favor. You're taking your own garbage out. And we think that we've done such good things when we when we throw out these token prayers to God. We think we've, God, you know, I, I prayed over my food. Really? Is that your prayer life? Let's, look, let's go back at, um, and look at that passage that in Luke 11, verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So I thought about this passage, and any time that I've seen a message called Teach Us to Pray, and I've seen a lot of them in my lifetime, billboards, uh, cassette tapes, messages online, Teach Us to Pray, the whole message is about teaching you to pray. Right. Breaking down the Lord's Prayer, or the, what we know of as the Lord's Prayer, breaking it down, teaching you how to pray. This morning I want to I want to put a twist in that. And I want to ask you, why did they say teach us to pray? And then I'm going to answer it for you. But I want you to think about it. Why did his disciples say teach us to pray? And I will present to you that the reason that they asked him to teach them to pray was because they recognized the power of prayer in his life. Amen? Yes. Okay, so just to put it into some kind of terms that, that we can think about. I spend some time with Sam and he goes down to the water and he throws his rod, so casts his rod and, and he brings in a big fish. And he walks around to buy a stump and he casts in and he catches a big fish. And then he goes to the other side of the lake and he, I'm watching him and he casts it. And I come up and I say, Sam, teach me to fish. I say that because Sam is a fisherman and he gets action when he fishes. He brings fish in and so I say, teach me to fish. Right. These disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray, because Jesus prayed and he got action. They connected the dots in that Jesus' prayer had something to do with the power that he had. Now we often think that, well, he was the Son of God. According to the first chapter of John, he was the creator of everything. We look at that and say, he didn't have to pray. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. 
I printed out just a few passages of when Jesus prayed, and I'm not going to uh, read these, but I have them for reference if you would like a copy of this. And let me just read some of the times that Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed at his baptism. He prayed in the morning before heading to Galilee. He prayed after healing people. He prayed before healing people. He prayed all night long the night before choosing his disciples. Did you know that? Did you know that before he chose his 12 disciples, the night before he prayed all night long? He prayed before giving thanks to God, before feeding the 5,000. He prayed before feeding the 4,000 because it's two incidences where he fed the multitude. He prayed while healing a, while healing a deaf and mute man. He prayed before teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer. He prayed when he laid hands on the little children. He prayed at the Lord's Supper. He prayed for Peter's faith when Satan asked to sift him. He prayed for himself and his disciples and all believers before going to Gethsemane. He prayed after being nailed to the cross. Wow. And he prayed at his last breath. My God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it is finished. He prayed. Jesus prayed. He, he made a habit of praying. He never lost a connection with God in his prayer. So I want you to really ponder prayers and what gets answered today. In James 5.16, if you'll turn there, we're going to see a statement that, again, is overlooked. Where? James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, you know me. You know I've got to look up the words to see what they mean. We don't we don't use words like effectual and fervent anymore. And I was a little surprised to find that effectual fervent is one word. It's not two words. And effectual fervent means, in, from the Greek word, to be operative, to be at work, to be effective, to display one's activity, to show oneself operative. So that's a word of action. That's not a passive word, it's an active word. To be operative, to be at work, to be, to be effective, to display one's activity, to show oneself operative. So that means that your prayer life needs to be active. It doesn't need to be blasé, just throw it out there, just do a Hail Mary and, you know, quote something. Now, I'm guilty of that. I can confess to you today. It says, that first starts out, confess your faults one to another. Let me just confess to you that, I'm, that I failed. You know, let me give you an example. Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. Is that effectual fervent? Is that really active? That's about as little nothing to nothing prayer as I could say. Now I know sometimes you need a quick prayer. You got your you cross a train track and the car in front of you stops and you look up and you're on the track and the train's right there. You're going to say a quick prayer, and it's probably going to be effectual and fervent, isn't it? <laughs> but if you just say, "Thank you for this food." Thanks. Thanks, God. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up this week. If you if you bow your head and say, Thanks, God. But have you ever really thought about what you're thankful for or what you're saying? You know, we often tell people, I, I love you. But do you really ever look them in the eyes and use a few more words than that? 
You know, I love you so easy to say. And how many times have people said it and then stabbed you in the back? So saying I love you doesn't mean anything. It's not, it doesn't mean a hill of beans. But when you sit, sit down and look across the table with your wife and you hold her hand and you say, my life would not be the same without you. The day I met you, my life changed. And I wished I'd known you longer so I could have loved you more. And things like that. When you start doing that, that is what God wants to hear from you. That is the kind of things that a wife wants to hear from her husband, and that is the kind of thing God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear how much you love him. He wants you to be to recognize by your words how you feel like a failure without him. That's what we're saying when we say effectual, fervent prayer. He wants to hear how bad your need is. Bless him, Lord, just bless him. You know? I, I told you the story about how I was going down the road for several years and I'd see somebody broken down, I'd say, Lord, send them some help. I could pull my little hand out there, Lord, send them some help. And one day, I was about to throw my hand out, and God said, why don't you help them? Why don't you help them? And I had not stopped to hear from God. I was too busy telling God what to do. So, obviously I could go a lot of scripture, so I was having to pick and choose between the ones we look at. So I almost turned the book of Daniel book of Daniel. Let's think about some things. I, besides Jesus being a man of prayer, to me Daniel is the model of the prayer warrior. He lived through th three kingdoms. His prayer life was mentioned over and over again. And we're going to look at Daniel chapter 6 to start with. In verse 10, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to read just part of this story, but you know this is this passage where the people in the kingdom of Babylon wanted to destroy Daniel, wanted to get rid of him, and so they knew that the king liked Daniel, and they, they convinced the king to write a decree so that anybody that prayed over the next 30 days except to the king, except honoring the king, would be thrown in the lion's den. You know the story from childhood. And here is a man who is threatened with his life if he prays. To me that sounds very familiar with our modern society. That sounds like a situation where if we don't pray, or if we do pray, we're going to lose our jobs we're going to be expelled from school. We're going to be mocked. Something's going to happen. People are going to take one step sideways so that they're not in the path of the bullet because you're about to be shot. This is the kind of situation that Daniel was in. Now, what could he have done after this decree if he wanted to pray? Obviously, he could have prayed in silence and prayed in secret and shut his doors. Right? We all recognize that. We've, we've even said it to students. Well, you, nobody can ever stop you from praying because, you know, you don't have to pray out loud. and You know, you just pray. You just pray. And I'm sure that some well-meaning people have told, told you that, that you, just, you can just pray anywhere and anytime, and that's true. But there is a time when your prayer needs to be evident to other people. Parents, your prayer life needs to be evident to your children. Your children will grow up either not ever knowing that you ever pray, seeing dad pray around the food and just says, thank you God for the food, amen, or they will see a prayer warrior in you that one day they'll say, dad, teach me to pray. Think about that. Think about that, that your child will either see you and mock you in saying, Thank you for the food. They'll be just like you. 
they'll throw that rod out there with nothing on the end of it not knowing that there's a difference in fishing and just throwing a piece of lead out in the water what kind of pattern are you showing your children Daniel had an open evident prayer life look at verse 10 of Daniel chapter 6 now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime first of all nothing changed about his prayer life he prayed just like he had done before nothing stopped him from praying and second of all he was visually open to the world to see that he prayed has anybody ever said to you I know that you're a prayer warrior I know that you pray and you get results that's a great thing if they've said that that means your prayer life is evident your prayer life should be evident and open you say well brother Paul I just I pray with, I don't I just pray in silence you need to be praying out loud and very often you need to be on your knees and we don't talk about that much anymore about praying on your knees but all the saints prayed on their knees in this book there is evidence of many of the saints that prayed on their knees so often that they had calluses on their knees that is the posture of prayer the posture of prayer that does not mean your prayer won't be answered if you're not on your knees and sometimes people have knee issues and they can't get on their knees but let me tell you that you need to get on your knees sometimes amen amen amen, amen. amen. make sure you're still, still with me he prayed three times a day with his windows open toward Jerusalem right now we have a big battle going on between Islam and Christianity we have Muslims coming into this country that will be allowed to pray fold their little rug out and pray toward Mecca or wherever they pray to and nobody will say one word to them but if a Christian prays the ACLU will be at that school the ACLU do not say anything to Muslims because they're afraid of them Christians for too long have not stood up for their rights we need to be praying and if I had to do all over again going through high, uh, public school today when they said okay you can have a moment of silence this morning I'd be down on my knees because you know what a moment of silence is standing there and thinking about you know wonder what's for dinner after this is over with you know what I, I don't know if I studied up that geog for that geography test this morning uh, on your knees yeah it feels embarrassing the first time you do it and you might get laughed at later on but that is prayer get in the position for prayer get in the position for prayer let's look at um, chapter 9 verse 20 of Daniel Daniel chapter 9 verse 20 this is where um, the prophecy is given to Daniel in this chapter of the 70 weeks which is which was one of the most astounding worldwide history world history prophecies ever given this is a timetable for world the entire world are you following me history this is a big prophecy this is not a prophecy about the fall of Jerusalem or something like that of one city this is about the entire world verse 20 and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God yea whilst I was speaking in prayer even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening oblation and he informed me and talked with me and said O Daniel I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding 
At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Gabriel says, your prayers were heard from the beginning. And you read through this and you find out that there was a delay going on in heaven and in the spiritual realm. There was spiritual warfare going on. Let me Listen to me, guys. What this means is you have a need that all of a sudden you know about. It might have happened yesterday or the day before. It might have been going on in something that you have, were not aware of and all of a sudden, you now are aware of it. I mean, I don't know that any kind of needs that just happen like, oh my goodness, the roof is leaking. Oh my goodness, you've got cancer. Oh my goodness, whatever it happens. It didn't just happen at the moment you found out about it, did it? At that moment, you may say a prayer. You may start praying about it. You know, we had a prayer request for cancer this morning. That's something that's ongoing. From the moment that you pray, your prayers are heard. It's not a, you've got to build this up, but from the moment you pray. Now, so, so you might say, well, I only need to pray once then. No, because you need to continue in prayer because spiritual warfare is going on. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Battles are going on. You are praying, and what we used to say, praying through, until the battle is over with and you get the answer. Right. God always answers prayer. He may answer it yes, no, or wait. That's, right. That's the three answers. Yes, no, or wait a minute. Okay? God always answers. So if you haven't gotten the answer yet, it doesn't mean that God's like busy over here keeping Jupiter in its orbit. You know? Right. That's right. God is actively listening to your prayers. In Revelation, we saw that. The prayers of the saints are collected up as incense, as a sweet smell into heaven. That's the prayers of the saints. So when you pray, keep praying. Because at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. At the beginning. Now let's look at um, chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled and in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month as I was by the side of the great river which is Hedekel then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz his body was like the burl and his face was as appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and his feet like in color and to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and saw this great vision, and there remaineth no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Skip down to verse 12. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy words were heard. Again, from the first time you started praying, something happened, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. 21 days, he said, there was a spiritual warfare going on. Now, I want you to get this picture in your mind, because this could be a story, but it is a true story. When he started praying, God sent forth this angel, and this attack of demons came to withstand, to withhold this angel 
from delivering and from ministering into Daniel. This was a big deal that was taking place. This was something that the devil really wanted to stop. He did not want this vision to be revealed to Daniel. He did not want Daniel to have this knowledge. He wanted to stop it. He wanted to break Daniel's faith. Daniel was a mighty man of prayer, and so the enemy sent in this attack to stop this angel. 21 days this was going on, 21 of our earth days. 21 of our earth days, Daniel is praying. Please consider that your prayers should go through until something is done. You need to continue praying until something changes. Many of you have been praying for things for years. For years, right? Everybody in this room has had something that you've prayed about for years. It may be that it's not God's timetable, but I will tell you that when it is God's timetable, it will happen. Amen? Also know that in the spirit world, battles are going on, and that your prayers are there. They are collective. Amen? And your prayers are effective. Your, your prayers. Amen? Now, I'm skipping over a lot of this. If you want the scriptures later, I will share the rest of these scriptures with you. I, I have seven aspects of a prayer warrior and consistent or in, in uh, effective prayer. You want your prayer life to be effective. You want to pray with power. You want to pray prayers to get answered. Here's seven things. The prayer warrior has a righteous life. The prayer warrior has a righteous life. What that means is you can't live like the devil and then when you get in trouble call out to God and expect an answer. Say that again. You can't live like the devil and get an answer from God because you all of a sudden got in trouble. Right. You can't go out and do the things you want to do and then turn around and say, oh God, I'm so sorry, and by the way, I need help. Right, that's right. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That means you need to be living, if you don't have any needs right now, that's great, but you will. And you need to be living a righteous life up until that day when you call out prayer for help for me or prayer help for yourself. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Right. Not the prayers of a man that's sorry he got caught or sorry he did what he did, but the prayers of a righteous man. So the first the first point is the effective prayer prayer warrior is living a righteous life. Now I know that there's people that say, well, if you're saved, you're righteous because you've got the blood of Jesus in you. That's not what the Bible teaches. Somebody may have told you that, but that's not what the Word of God says. Amen? you got to actually obey. Right? Yeah. Jesus said, those that obey me, love me. Amen. The second one is, the prayer warrior has a consistent prayer life. Now that goes along with the first one a little bit, in that you don't just pray when you need something, but you need to have constant prayer. Imagine if Angie and I only talked to each other when we needed something. If we only just said, you know, spoke to each other when, when we had need of something. Need her to do something that she needs me to do something. Need to ask her something. But otherwise, there's no conversation. No conversation whatsoever. It's sad, but there's a lot of people that way in this world today among each other. They only pick up the phone when they need something. You know? Family members don't pick up the phone. Don't, don't ever just call, say, I really miss you, I love you. They call and say, you know what? Car's not running right. I don't know how to. Can you help me with this? Got got a loose floorboard. I'm having some electrical problems. Can you tell me how to fix my computer? I get that one all the time. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's what I do. My phone rings constantly. My radio goes off. My cell phone ringing all the time. I even get them on the weekend. I get emails on the weekend. I know you're off and all that, but I'm having a problem. Can you suggest a good antivirus for my, and you know, like, yes, I can help you out. But it's not because they love me. 
You know, a prayer warrior has a consistent prayer life. Your prayers need to be consistent. Don't just pray over your food. Don't just bless your food. That's a good thing that you thank God for your food. But you need to thank God when you wake up every morning. Amen? You need to thank God. Number three. This goes along with effectual, fervent prayer. The prayer warrior expresses himself to God from his heart. He does not use Hail Mary full of grace and repetitious prayers and, you know, for what we're about to receive, let us be truly thankful. You know, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. He did, I mean, that's fine to teach children to pray that way, but real prayer is from your heart. It's not a typewritten monologue to God, this is what I want you to do for me. Number four, a prayer warrior always prays according to God's will. You want your prayers answered? Don't be praying things outside of God's will. And I've heard people say, well, Brother Paul, how do you know what's in God's will? Well, I'll tell you this. Here's a whole book. Here's a whole book. And if you pray something outside this book, you're praying outside the will of God. I heard a woman one time who said that she prayed that God would just bring her with this other man that she could divorce her husband because this other man was a man of God and he was a missionary. She, she knew she was called to be a missionary too. And she was actually praying that God would help her to become a missionary with this other man who was a pastor or a preacher or evangelist or whatever and to lead this man. Is that the will of God? Nope. You can't pray things outside the will of God. God just strike him with lightning. That's not your place. He may be going to strike that person with lightning. They may deserve judgment. But it ain't. It's not from you. You're not going to release that. You need to make sure you pray the will of God and that you know the will of God. Now, there's times when you don't. You're you're checking God. You want to find out the will of God, and that's prayer too. You find you know, God reveal your will to me. But you need to be praying, it, it is thy will. Thy will be done will never fail. That's the prayer that never fails, thy will be done. Amen? Jesus prayed, if it be possible, let this cup be taken from me. It wasn't possible. Right? It wasn't possible. Nevertheless, thy will be done. So that's the kind of prayer you need to pray. The real prayer warrior, number five, recognizes his weaknesses and God's strength. Now, maybe you remember a few moments ago when I read from the book of Daniel, and it started out saying that I, Daniel, was confessing my sins and the sins of my people. You need to recognize your sins. You need to recognize his strength and the contrast between the two. That is establishing the relationship every time you pray. We've been taught by the modern church to come boldly before the throne of grace, to just go right in, you're a king's kid, and you just need to sit on daddy's lap and just tell him what you need. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Right? Just call him up and call him up and tell him what you want. But when you have that attitude, do you think you're going to come before God Almighty who created everything in the universe, who's seen everything in human history, who knows you inside and out, and you're going to go stomping in there and say, God, I want this. I need it, and I want it, and I want you to give it to me. Do you think he's going to answer that prayer? If you're in sin, you go in there, you're a sinful person, and the first thing you need to confess is your sins. So a prayer warrior recognizes his weakness and God's strength. And when you recognize God's strength, you're recognizing that 
He alone is the person that can help you. You know, sometimes we say, God, can you can you help out a little bit? Can you assist in this? Can, can you just help me get on my feet? And then I'll be okay. But when you recognize the to total need you have of God, you will get results. Amen? Number six, the prayer warrior is willing to pray anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. Now, I actually learned some things about prayer from my wife. And some things that I saw from her in her prayer life, I felt ashamed that I had never done. But let me just give you an illustration. We're walking through Walmart, and she talks to, and somebody's talking to us about our dress and you know wants to know what we believe and all that well in a few minutes the woman starts telling about some need that she has and my wife takes her by the hand she said well let's just pray about that I was stunned I was shocked I wasn't embarrassed I was stunned that I had never done that myself I was thinking why have I never done that how can this woman have this boldness to just pray with people not care about what's going on in aisle number two you know and she's just simply praying and the beauty of it caught me off guard that it is so simple that we just stop and pray about something let me ask you this have you ever prayed at work guys at work have you ever prayed at your school I mean have you ever prayed shopping have you ever prayed, you know, when, it, when there's a party going on, everybody's supposed to be focusing on the party. Have you ever just stopped and prayed and interrupted what life was going on? You know, have you ever stopped and done that? That is a prayer warrior. Now, we are so uh, used to throwing out prayer requests on Facebook and people clicking like. Or even at the most, they say, well, we're praying. And I'm guilty of saying that and never praying. Or say, or click, or type in, I'm praying and saying, help them, Lord, and just continue right on. That is not effectual, fervent prayer, is it? But that's what we've gotten used to, and we've got to get out of that. We want our prayers answered. We've got to be someone who will stop and focus on God. We're told to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That is not praying without ceasing. That is working without praying. That is doing your job, watching your TV, driving your car without praying. We need to be willing to pray anytime, anywhere, just like Daniel. Anytime, anywhere. Public places pray. And the last one is a prayer warrior expects his his prayer to get answered. He expects his prayers to be heard and answered. Now so many times we throw those we sling those prayers out there, don't we? Just, you know, throw a prayer over here. Throw a prayer over there. We throw them out there and we don't really expect them to get answered. Or we forget about them. Have you ever kept a prayer journal? Anybody here ever done that? Kept a prayer journal? Some of you have? I like a prayer journal. A prayer journal is a good way for you to write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets. That's what Habakkuk says. Write the vision. A prayer journal lets you write down and then come back later and check and see what God's answered. You're going to be shocked because every one of those prayers are going to be answered. When you do that, your prayers will be answered. We have an incident in the book of Acts where Peter was in prison and the whole pe the people in the church he was a part of was praying for Peter's release. They was That's what they was doing behind the door. They was praying for Peter's release. Peter was let out miraculously when the door swung open. An angel let him outside. And then he went down and he knocked on the door and a woman said, Who is it? He said, It's Peter. And a woman ran back in and says, Peter, Peter, we're, we're just praying for Peter. He's knocking on the door. She didn't even let him in. 
You know, how many times have you prayed for something, God sent the answer, you didn't even receive it. Right. That's you didn't right. even understand that's what the answer was. You know, that's the way we are. We pray and we don't expect the answer. Or we just forget about it. You should pray expecting the answer. Pray, write it down. Father, you know our car situation. We need a new vehicle. And I'm praying on this date and this time. And Father, I'm asking you, I'm putting it in writing. I'm asking you for this to be to be given, taken care of. I'm not asking for a new uh, Cadillac. I'm asking for a vehicle. And lo and behold, God will answer that prayer. Amen? Amen. Think about this. As I close, I want you to think about this. How many prayers have you pray, been praying for for years that have never been answered? You, you remember them right now. As I say that, you, it's brought to your mind. But you've not ever written it down. You've not ever written it down. I want you to start writing down the things you pray for. Everybody in here, write down the things you pray for. Start keeping a journal. You, you don't have to share it with anybody. It's between you and God. Start asking God for solutions to problems. Amen? Amen. Start petitioning God for other people's needs. And then check back on them. You know, I mean, how many times have we said, well, we, was, we prayed for you a couple of years ago. Wasn't you the one we prayed for? But how'd that turn out, you know? Yeah, right. We don't ever do any follow-up work, do we, right. to find out what happened. Now, I know sometimes it's difficult. We may not see that person again. But we need to follow up. You know what that does? That builds faith in you. It builds your faith because you can see that God answered your prayer. When you here's a little tip when you're going through your prayer journal, your prayer diary, and you go through there, take a big red or colorful high, highlighter and check it when it's done. And then you can flip back through there and say, answered, 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 answered. God will answer your prayers. Amen. Now let's pray. Father God, we come before you today, Lord, finishing this message about prayer. Lord, I ask that you would challenge us to change our prayer life, that we might be effective, that we might be fervent, that we might be active, Lord, in our prayer life, that we might be willing to pray anytime, anywhere, Father, that you would make us all prayer warriors for the kingdom of God. Lord, build our faith. Lord, I pray that our children would see that we're such prayer warriors that they would come to mom or dad and say, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And that is my prayer today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.